So next, let's move on to the new material that we want to cover for section 14.4. The main topic that we're going to talk about today is the linearization of a function. So by definition, the linearization of a function, let's call our function f of xy, and we're going to look at its linearization at the point a, b. We're going to assume that the partial derivatives f sub x of a, b and f sub y of a, b exist. So this is a nice review of the 14.3 material of partial derivatives. The linearization is given by this long messy thing. The long messy thing L of xy is equal to f of ab plus f sub x of ab times x minus a plus f sub y of ab times y minus b. Blah, right? Let's break it down piece by piece and talk about what each of these pieces are. So if we wanted to think about it, in one way, my f sub a, b, well, that's just a single value. That's like my z value. If I plug in a and b into a function, what do I get out? I get out my height at that point, or my z value. I'm going to diagram each of these. Um, and what's going on here? My f sub x of a, b, this is our partial derivative at the point a, b. So this is just going to be a single value. And this really is just the slope, maybe I'll put slope in quotes. It's the slope of the vertical trace where I'm holding y constant at b. So it's my slope in the x direction. And that's similar to what I see here of my partial derivative with respect to y. This is just my slope in my y direction. And if I wanted to, I could think about if I was just doing my linearization of a single variable function. Bear with me for a second. Let's consider a single variable function. So in this case, I'm looking at the point where let's let x equal a my partial derivative really is just a slope value, m times x minus a. And I don't need to worry about this partial derivative with respect to y because that doesn't exist, right? Because it's just a single variable function. So this is my thought bubble, single variable functions. And why am I talking about this? Well, this really is just the equation of a line. Right? This is our point slope equation of a line. I'm taking my x value, I'm shifting it over by a to make sure that it goes through the point a. This, I could think of it as my uh, output. So this is a y value in two variables. But my output, I'm shifting it up by this output. So essentially, this is the equation of the line through um, the point a comma f of a. And it has slope m. So in this case, our linearization with a couple of caveats, instead of being a line, it's going to end up being a plane. So before we get to a lot of details of the theory, let's look at a quick example. We're going to find the linearization of this function, f of x, y is equal to 4x plus 5y squared at the point 2, 1, 9. Let's recall what our linearization is going to be. What do each of our pieces look like? I'm going to do a little bit of scratch work. First, let's compute our partial derivative with respect to x. That's treating y as a constant. So this constant term just becomes 0, and the derivative of 4x is 4. My partial derivative with respect to y, treating x as a constant, this term goes to 0, and I get 10y. And so if I evaluate my partial derivative with respect to x, well, maybe we'll start filling in our formula. So our local linearization we know is going to be equal to f of ab, maybe I'll write it all out, plus f sub x at a, b times x minus a, plus f sub y of a, b times f 
x, y minus b. Well, in this case, what is our f of a, b? Our a, b in this point, our a value is equal to 2. Our b value is equal to 1. Maybe I'll write this a value is equal to 2. b value is equal to 1. And my f of a, b value is going to be what happens when I plug 2 into this function for x and 1 into this function for y. I get 2 times 4, which is 8, plus 5. This shouldn't be a 9 then. What is 8 plus 5 is 13, not 9. Good. There was an error in what I had written out. So f of a, b in this case, when x equals 2 and b equals 1 is 13. So that means for our linearization, L of x, y, my f of a, b is just 13, plugging in my point value into my function, plus my partial derivative with respect to x at the point a, b. Well, it turns out it doesn't matter. No matter what, my partial derivative with respect to x is going to be equal to 4. So this becomes 4. Next, I have x minus a. The x is my x variable that stays a variable, and we know what a is. a is equal to 2. And I do the same for the next term. My partial derivative with respect to y evaluated at the point a, b. We found that the partial derivative with respect to y is equal to 10y, and I'm plugging in where y equals 1. So that's just 10. And then I get y minus b, which is 1. And we have found the linearization. A thing to point out, this is essentially the z value, f of a, b, the slope, and I'm shifting my x over so that it goes through the point 2, and I'm shifting my y values over so they go through the point 1, that this is, in fact, the plane through the point 2, 1, 13. And it's going to be tangent to my function f of x, y at my point 2, 1, 13. So really, this is exactly my tangent plane. Let's take a look at some theory to verify why that would be the case. So we're going to take a look at some theory. And if you say to me, Carolyn, I hate theory. That's not something that I really want to look at. I agree with you. I actually don't think that this course gives you enough tools to really support why we're doing the theory. And because of that, it can seem a little artificial. Uh, that said, I think it is an important thing to have an idea of the relationship between differentiability and this local linearity property. So I'm going to talk about it, but I'm not going to hold you accountable for this in particular for exams. So this definition is something that I'd like you to see that you don't need to know. This definition is the definition of local linearity. So we're going to assume that our function is defined on some domain disk, and that disk is open, you don't have to worry about that, but it's a disk containing the point a, b. And we also assume that our partial derivatives both exist, meaning it's a nice function, right? And the partials exist and it's defined. We say that our function is locally linear at our point a, b, if the linear approximation that we talked about earlier approximates our function at that point a, b to first order. So what does it mean? That means that our function itself is equal to the linear approximation, which we defined previously, plus some epsilon function times this value. This is a length value. Right? So this is the, the linear distance between our point x and the, the point, or between our point x, y and our point a, b. This is just Pythagorean theorem. So this, this function, this epsilon function, is going to be a special function such that the limit as x, y approaches a, b of this function goes to zero. What is all of this stuff saying? Essentially what we're saying is our function f of x, y is a locally linear function if really close at that point a b it's going to be really similar to this linear approximation we've seen something similar before let's say in our two-dimensional case 
choo, choo, choo. let's say this is our function f of x and this is our point a b we've seen that in calc 1 as you zoom in our linear approximation is really really close to our functional values as we get closer and closer and closer and zoom in, right? As we zoom in at this point, our function is gonna be closely approximated by this straight line. Because we're dealing in multiple dimensions, that becomes more difficult. Instead of a single variable function, let's say we have this uh, parabolic figure, we're saying that this local linearization, which is a plane, approximates this point on our three-dimensional surface. So this is an important definition. This is the definition of differentiability. So let's assume that f of x, y is defined on this disk D containing a, b, and f of x, y is differential at b, a, b if the partials f of x and f of y both exist and f of x, y is locally linear. So in order for a two-dimensional function to be differentiable, we have these two properties that have to hold. Notice that this is different than what we saw in single variables. We say that a function is differentiable if the derivative exists, and then we were done. But in this case, we have to have both partial derivatives and this local linearity property in order for us to know that a function is differentiable. Why is this important? This is important because if a function is differentiable, then the tangent plane to our function at our point is exactly the linearization that we were talking about earlier. So this is the big takeaway. Dun, 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 dun. I'm boxing it because it's our big takeaway. This big takeaway is saying that our tangent plane is going to be exactly given by the linearization that we've talked about. It's going through the point a, b, f of a, b, and it has these slope values, slope in quotes, these partial derivatives to indicate what direction the plane is tilting in. One final piece of theory that I wanted to mention is let's say like this definition of differentiability is really messy. Like it's sort of long. I would have to compute this local linear and that, that has that epsilon property that the, we don't have to deal with. So here's our shortcut. How do we tell whether or not uh, a function is differentiable? If my partial derivatives exist, and they are continuous, then we know our function is differentiable. This is not an if and only if property, but if both these things hold, then we know our function is differentiable. And so this is going to be our check for differentiability in this class, that our partial derivatives exist and they have to be continuous. Then we know that our function is differentiable.